Welcome to AskTheLawyers.com. I'm Leslie Rohde. Today we're talking about the term gadolinium. Now, you may not know what that term means, but if you've ever had an MRI or you are scheduled to have one, you'll want to know what this term is. We are thankful that attorney Jack Hickey is joining us now to give us a little bit more information about this. He is with the Hickey Law Firm in Miami. Welcome, Jack. Thank you, Leslie, and uh, good afternoon to you. Well, what is this gadolinium? What is it used for? So gadolinium is an element, uh, right? It's called a rare earth, uh, which ironically, that's what it's called in science, uh, but it is not rare. It actually is uh, very prevalent. It's very, um, uh, it's widespread throughout the crust of the earth. It's just that it is one of the 17 rare earth elements that, uh, and they're tied up with other elements or other substances uh, in the crust of the earth. Gadolinium happens to be magnetic. And for that reason, uh, they inject it and put it into uh, a, a, a soluble substance and inject it into people's blood and then when it circulates throughout your body, uh, they can do an MRI. The MRI is a big magnet, right? An MRI is a big magnet, and it can see where the gadolinium uh, is focused and uh, is throughout the body. So it allows, it is useful. It is useful because it allows the radiologists and ultimately physicians to see what's going on inside the body. So it is something, it's a magnetic substance injected into uh, a, a solution, right, which is in turn injected into the body and used as a what they call contrast material to see things, uh, so to speak, and see where maybe the problems are in your body. I can see how that could be useful to uh, a doctor who's looking for that, but does everyone have gadolinium in, uh, put into their bloodstream who has an MRI? So no, the answer to that, the short answer is no. So there are contrast MRIs and non-contrast. And this is something interesting because when your doctor prescribes an MRI, you think, okay, all MRIs are the same and certainly they are not in many ways. And we can talk about that and maybe the different MRIs is a topic for another day, uh, but uh, one thing you need to ask your doctor about when you're prescribed an MRI, is it a contrast MRI or a non-contrast MRI, right? So contrast MRI means that uh, something like gadolinium or gadolinium is used uh, in order to visualize things. So really horse of a different color if contrast is used uh, and then uh, with contrast gadolinium uh, probably will be used. And so uh, you have all these risks, uh, you know, associated with that. And those risks, Jack, are we to assume then that gadolinium is toxic for everyone? So this is the funny thing. And just like anything, just like anything that, uh, that, uh, that creates reactions, some people have very severe reactions. Some people have minor reactions. Some people have no reactions. So that is true, and I think that's I think that's generally accepted with regard to gadolinium. Uh, the problem is the people with reactions, which uh, which uh, tend to be a pretty significant percentage. Uh, the reactions uh, can be pretty significant, and they can last a lifetime. Uh, certainly, they uh, certainly they they last. Uh, anywhere, and a majority of these symptoms last anywhere from two months to six years. Uh, six years is a long time. Some last, as I say, uh, for a lifetime. And we can talk about the symptoms. I don't know if you want me. Yeah, that, uh, that, that'd be great. That'd be great. Because, um, I, but I first want to ask you this. So, so I guess um, gadolinium is supposed to just leave your system, but you're saying that sometimes, sometimes it can stay in the body and cause some of this, these symptoms? Right. So um, they've done animal studies and they have shown that gadolinium, there's traces of gadolinium uh, in, the, in the body, in that, in that case, an animal study, um, uh, mainly in the hair and skin than in the blood. 
And uh, that is where toxins tend to go is to the hair and skin, by, by the way. And that's why you've heard of maybe on CSI uh, or throughout history, really, they have, they take hair samples, right, to study what toxins or things are in people's body. And uh, for some reason, the hair, you know, the body uh, gets elements, things into hair, uh, whether it's toxic or non-toxic. And so that's a good way to study things. But that's what the animal studies tell us is that there's a great deal, a uh, great uh, percentage uh, of gadolinium registers there. So what are the symptoms that people have that, that you've come across, that you've experienced with some of your clients? So not only with our clients, uh, because we have a great deal, we have a lot of uh, people calling and going on Facebook and writing us uh, about this. So there's a tremendous amount of interest. So it's not only the clients, it's the studies. Okay. And this is very, very interesting, uh, but but not unexpected uh, that that the symptoms would vary with individual, of course. and And that does not mean that the science is not there. That doesn't mean that it's not a valid phenomenon. That just means just like with a common cold, different people react differently. That doesn't mean there's no common cold there. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So the general, in 100% in of the people with symptoms, they reported generalized pain. <coughs> Excuse me. They, they reported generalized pain. 100% of the people who have ever reported problems have reported pain. And I would say, and I would break this down into generally four different categories of symptoms and problems. One is general. I'm going to call it general. Two is, and I am looking down at some notes I made before you know, we went on. Uh, two is skin uh, problems, having dealt with dealing with the skin. Three is muscle. And then four is other, which is, of course, a general you know, sort of catch-all. With the, with the general category... Um, there's, of course, pain, like we said, but then there are the other neurological uh, sort of symptoms, the, what you would expect, numbness, burning, tingling, prickling. Uh, and so that's throughout the body, mainly the skin. Uh, so, so you have those kinds of symptoms there. With the skin itself, you have tight skin feeling, skin lesions, actually, hyperpigmentation, right, darkening, uh, hyper, uh, right? So a collection of color or pigment in the skin, so blotchiness, and also a mottled, M-O-T-T-L-E-D, mottled look, so a blotchiness about the skin, and then rashes also uh, in the skin. So this is this can be really a horrible thing. Some of these, as I say, some of these are more transient or temporary. Some are pretty permanent. Then muscle, number four, muscle, type symptoms category uh, category of uh, symptoms and problem that includes twitching uh, which can be small local and and rapid uh, also weakness of the muscle muscles <coughs> excuse me weakness of the muscles which is you know a horrible uh, can be horrible and debilitating um, and let me say something here is um, is that uh, uh, Chuck Norris uh, sort of brought to light a few years ago this whole problem because his wife experienced some of these very severe symptoms and he brought a uh, suit on behalf of his wife or his wife did, he and his wife brought suit uh, for this and she had experienced uh, many of these symptoms. So the muscle, the weakness of the muscles, that's the, the third category. And then four is the other and this is a really big category. Listen to this. The ocular or eye problems uh, you can experience, and that's the vision uh, can get worse. You can get dry eye. Uh, you can get uh, blood clot eyes. Uh, so eye problems, very, uh, very disturbing. Fatigue, right? Chronic fatigue or being tired. Uh, that is something that uh, people experience. Cognitive thinking. Being able to, whether it's memory, actually thinking, uh, and having a clear head, uh, those difficulties have been experienced. Uh, you have ENT, what we call ENT problem, ear, nose, and throat, right? You go to your ENT doctor, ear, nose, and throat. So there's 
tingling, uh, excuse me, uh, ringing in the ears, which is called tinnitus, uh, uh, and also uh, shallow uh, swallowing, excuse me, swallowing, swallowing problems, as well as voice problems. So these are really, really disturbing. A very uh, wide we, array we, of, of symptoms, that's for sure. Yeah, low body temperature, hair loss, itchy skin, balance problems, swelling of the extremities. Uh, so this is uh, so these are the these are the type of uh, problems and symptoms. There are four different general categories, I would say, and uh, uh, I would say most of them, if you had to generalize, of course, uh, most of them, if you had to generalize, I suppose most of them relate to the nervous system or systems because there are many nervous systems in the body. But I want to say one one other thing in closing about you know. The symptoms and problems, and and of course, the people who market this stuff, uh, for example, Bayer, uh, which is the huge pharmaceutical company. I mean, they would say, "Oh, look at this! You know, there are many, many symptoms, and so therefore, uh, there's no valid uh, phenomenon here." And I say this: uh, first of all, just common sense was you're injecting this material. It is a rare earth uh, material. Uh, you're injecting it into the body, into the bloodstream. It's going everywhere. It's going everywhere. So where it affects, it's, it's possibly and potentially going to affect any and every system in the body. So not surprising that uh, the symptoms are so far reaching. And so that's the observation I would make. I think it's important for people to know, too, I mean, it sounds very risky, but it can also, this gadolinium can also be very helpful in certain circumstances. But it's important to know uh, if a per person has some sort of health condition already, shouldn't they say, no way, I don't want that? I know that, say, say you have a kidney problem. It might be right, hard to process right. that. What, what types of conditions are we talking about that a person might have where he or she may say, no, 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 no gadolinium? So you touched on it is the main thing, right? The main thing is uh, if you have kidney problems, if you have a problem with kidney function, you need to tell your doctor uh, about that and to sort out whether you want to take the risk uh, with the uh, kidney problem. Uh, there's something called NSF, NSF, which is a, a, a nephrogenic uh, systemic uh, fibrosis. Um, I can't find that in my notes, but I'm, uh, so that's what the that's what NSF stands for. Uh, this is a uh, just as it sort of says, it nephrogenic, which means nephro means your kidneys, and genic means created uh, within or by, and uh, systemic and fibrosis. So it's a um, it's a thickening and fibrous uh, developing sort of situation with your kidneys and other organs. It's a really bad situation. If you have any kidney uh, problems or weakness, you need to tell your doctor, and you need to consider uh, not having the contrast, uh, the contrast um, uh, MRI. The other thing is if you have uh, some sort of, I, I would say if you have some sort of systemic neurological situation or systemic disease, whether it's lupus, um, I, well, I suppose you could, you could call MS systemic, although that has to do with demyelination in your brain, but it affects the rest of your body. Um, any sort of, you know, uh, fibromyalgia, um, any sort of systemic disease, certainly the autoimmune disease, diseases like lupus and things like that. Uh, if you have them, certainly disclose that to your doctor and consider the risks. I want to close with this, Jack. Um, if if you already had an MRI, say six months, a year ago, whatever, and then you're then you start experiencing health problems, what should you do? Do you just call your doctor first? You call a lawyer? What happens? Well, I would always call a doctor first. I mean, you want to you want to document it. You want to see if there's anything uh, you can do to uh, make it better. You want to uh, find out. Uh, you want to find out uh, what uh, what. Uh, did happen. If you don't know whether the MRI was contrast or non-contrast, you need to find out. And the medical records, by the way, are yours, the patients, right? I mean, they belong to the patient. So 
So you should be able to call up your doctor and say, look, could you do me a favor, please, or your doctor's office and say, look, could you uh, email me or fax me doctor's offices? Our, our medical system is, uh, frankly, way behind the times and they use fax machines more than email. Uh, but anyway, you should be able to get the radiology report. Okay, that's what an MRI report is called. It's a type of radiology report and get the report and read it and see if it says with contrast, without contrast, it will say in there uh, in the in the MRI report. So just your own case of mind. If it says it was without contrast, well, maybe what you're experiencing has nothing to do with gadolinium. Uh, but if it says with contrast, then you know. So that's the first thing is figure out what's going on and the second thing is you should call a lawyer who's handling these cases. And uh, we do handle these cases. As I say, we're, we're taking uh, inquiries, calls, and emails and such uh, on a daily basis here. Thank you, Jack, for all of that information. That's Jack Hickey with Hickey Law Firm. And I'm Leslie Rohde for AskTheLawyers.com, where you can choose a lawyer that lawyers choose.